Imagine a world that escapes reality, that is conceived in the mind of a former manager of Journey. And maybe in this world, it's not the Twilight Zone, but it's reality. And it's a narrative. And I'll tell you what I mean. Coming right up, you don't want to miss this. Hello everybody, Gary Stuckey here. Welcome back to another episode of Steve Perry News and I guess Journey News also. I usually try to separate those two, but we can group those together since we're kind of talking about Steve Perry in this too. But this morning, I was on Instagram. I was reading some things. You know, it's been a rough uh, few weeks or so, so this really made me just happy but it just shocked me to read and it kind of goes with something I've been talking about for the last couple of years it makes a whole lot of sense and it might stir up some things so you may want to share this video you may want to talk about this video but in this Instagram post by Herbie Herbert former manager of Journey he talks about the 39 year anniversary of Journey's album, Escape, which I've just talked about. Neil Sean's been talking about it online also, and some other band members, but here's what Herbie had to say about that album and what's going on. He says, it's been 39 years since the release of Escape. I was listening to the recordings while sitting in a hotel room in Ventura, California on October 17th, 1977. When I came up with the album title and sequence, it would start with Don't Stop Believing and end with Open Arms. The album would eventually be released in 1981. So, as you can see, if that's factual, what he's saying, so he's saying in October 1977, which we know that's when Steve just joined the band, just recorded Infinity. So he's listening to the Infinity recordings. Is it true that the songs were already picked out, which we know all the albums were picked out by Herbie. He named all the Journey albums in advance. We do know this. But here he's saying he already picked out the songs Don't Stop Believing, Open Arms, and the Escape album in 1977. But we know that Jonathan Cain, who wrote those songs, or had a, a hand in writing, Don't Stop Believing, too, in open arms. He wasn't with the band in 1977. Greg Riley was. So was the plan this whole time by Herbie and the band? You know, we know Herbie had a big part of the band, of, of forming the band. He had these ideas. So was part of this idea getting Jonathan Kane to come into the group, he knew that Greg Riley wasn't going to be in the band much longer. So was that the plan to write these songs with Jonathan Kane and then have the departure of Greg Riley? You know, I've said in, in the past, these songs sound like they run parallel with their lives. When Steve Perry talks about circus life and getting off the merry-go-round and escaping, in, in interviews, he talks about it. In songs, he talks about it. Was that part of the plan? Was that part of the narrative? So, did they secretly have Jonathan Cain already in place and writing songs in 1977? That's what he's saying. So, when Steve left, was that already part of the plan? Even though, you know, he may have been, you know, burnt out, and I'm sure he was. I'm not saying this is a lie made up, but it just makes a lot of sense. So with Steve, when he decided to come back to Journey, he wanted to get rid of Herbie. Is that because he didn't want to be part of that narrative anymore? 
but fast forward into the future when Steve does come back and even into today with all the things going on in Journey and the contracts and the Steve Smith, Ross Valerie things, the issues there. Herbie's right in the middle of that. Is there something going on there? He's back in the picture. Right? And tell me this, when Steve came back and he has the album Traces on the cover, Neil Sean with the dove on there, right? We know that story. But the song No Erasing talks about, it's been a long time coming since I saw your face. And we do know that the song, Something to Hide, on the Infinity album that goes back there to when Herbie Herbert was talking about listening to recordings. So that song, No Erasing, talks about those lyrics. In the lyrics of Something to Hide, it says, It's been a long, long time since I saw your face. Traces in my mind, I know. So Steve comes out with No Erasing. I know it's been a long time coming since I saw your face. And he's got traces as the album. So was that his way of saying, hey, there's been something to hide for all these years. And here it is. So when Neil Sean said at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, this is so long time coming. When Ross Valerie said, we're still here. And then Steve Perry wrote a song about we're still here. Does that all tie in? Does the fact that Steve Perry... This whole time, he wanted to escape the band, get off the merry-go-round. But was that part of the plan of Herbie Herbert? Did he know beforehand how it would end and how the albums would go? And is that why he was fired? Is that why he's coming back? And does that narrative mean that Steve is going to come back to the band? Because he said, when asked, would he come back to Journey? He said, if you, if I had to answer, he said, right now, the answer is no. If I had to answer right now, does that mean next year? It's just something to think about. Conspiracy theory, maybe. Ding, ding. Just think about it, though. Think about what I'm saying. If, if you notice, Steve... He doesn't bring up 19, well, he does. He brings up 1987. He doesn't bring up the trial by fire period. He doesn't bring up for the love of strange medicine. Does that mean he wants to keep the narrative intact and start over from where he left off? That's my way of thinking. That's what I'm thinking. What do you think? And do you think Herbie is finally trying to tell the truth and shine some light on this? And by doing so, was that part of the narrative? Was that part of the idea that for all these years, after Steve comes back, they were going to tell all that happened and how the songs were planned out? Because like I said, I knew that the albums were planned out by Herbie. Didn't know the songs were. So that's just shocking and just amazing and just mind-blowing if that's true that the songs were written in 1977, if that in fact is what he's saying there. Because I, I always thought that there was some kind of narrative and some kind of plan. And this would make a whole lot of sense. So, do me a favor. Go back and listen to some of the songs and see how they tie in. Go back to listen. Listen to this, the album Escape by Journey and tell me if that doesn't kind of relate to their lives. And go back to listen to all the albums with Steve and you tell me how some of the narratives fit because they do it makes it makes sense to me and this by no means is like a negative thing i'm not saying they lied or steve lied i think it's really cool i think it's a cool thing the story continues the journey continues i think it keeps it alive we need miracles and happiness and i know there'll be some naysayers and people that say uh but that goes against what i'm talking about here so go check out Herbie Herbert's Instagram post if he hasn't taken it off already. 
and let me know what you think because it's very interesting to me it would make for a good story and a good book maybe I'll write one one day maybe I'll sit down with Steve one day and talk about it or Neil or somebody I'm trying <laughs> but let me know what you think and uh, leave it in the comments and uh, I think it's a good story and whatever you do you know I'll keep you updated but whatever you do don't stop believing. This is Gary Stuckey. God bless you.